Yeah, be, uh, my people, my people, my people. Yeah, welcome to my platform, Timo Starboy, your early TikTok TV. Yeah, happy Monday to you, people. Happy Monday to you, my viewers, my fans all over the world. I greet you at your location time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And for those people who have already sleeping, good night. Yeah, so we're going to start fresh update. This is Monday live so please join us uh, on our facebook timo starboy channel blogs on our youtube timo starboy channel uh, reality talk tv on our uh, twitter timothy oladi pupo one at uh, timothy oladi pupo one that is my twitter handle please join us uh, we're gonna start now so uh you know as uh, what is trending you know about uh, tunumbu you know <laughs> My people, this uh, while well, I know they finished for Tunumbu uh, compound, uh, Mr. Tunumbu, you don't carry waiting pass him. Uh, you don't carry the load that is so heavy on his neck, so he cannot carry it, it, it all along again, you know. So you need help. You need help. Why I say you need help is that this man is too much baggage on his neck, you know up and down over there over here you know they just they they then they tune the man like a chewing gum on the internet on the anywhere you know social media now another one don't land he they said you know what he said for this one is that he accept the uh, iran election he don't he don't know that he's guilty uh, he stole the mandate uh, so he's afraid that to return that mandate for the owner so he said that he accepted that he will do the rerun, but Peter Obi, that is the LOP, Labour Party candidate, will not be included. So he will not be included. So it will face uh, only Atiku, Mr. Atiku, Abubaka. <laughs> so what did that say? What did this thing say to you, you guys that you are you are watching? So I just put the question on you guys that what did he say? What what that mean to you guys? That mean he has accepted, accepted the defeat. You know that uh, you know everything is just a lie lie, you know. Everything is uh dabaru. You know what's the that slang last slang we are using, you know, dabaru, dagboru, you know. You just want to do shortcut, but that shortcut they block him. So now he's finding his exit out. He cannot, he cannot see the exit. He can't see the exit out now. So he started by he want to rerun the election. He will accept the running of the election. But LP, that is a Labour Party candidate, OB, Peter OB, will not be included. So he afraid the man. Totally is as you know, the man at is the man is a is a giant for him, you know. The man is totally a giant. He's afraid the man to face the man squarely. And he know that if this man participated in the rerun of the election, that is, that is totally knockout. It's a smackdown for him. They will knock him out totally. Even say he doesn't even know his uh, destiny, whether he is going to be contested, he's going to, because all these uh, his, uh, papers is not validity, you know? We are talking about the... Uh, Certificate, best certificate, the certificate for the uh, uh, education in uh, Chicago. All those things is baggaging for his neck. Even not to talk of uh, the drug uh, something, you know, the, the, the smack on the, his face. So it was, all these things, is, it cannot go away. Because we have a judiciary, we have a system, we have a, a legislator, we have everything intact, you know. We have law, we have the rule of law. So that is guided the whole thing. So if you misconduct, if you misbehave, you know, you will be disqualified. You see? So the point is, this man doesn't even know his uh, fate on this rerun of election. Whether they will knock him out totally, disqualify him, because it's not uh, a man to be rerun that election to stand uh, with. So... Anyway, I will play you the video. Let me play you the because the video is going to uh, is going to just uh, facilitate our talk and uh, <clears throat> more speedy, you know. 
So let's play the video and know what is inside the content of the video. So here we go. Tinubu has come out again with another one. Oh, he have used all his strategies. No one has worked for him. Now he's here again. He's saying that if there must be a rerun election, they should remove Pitobi. Mm. That Pitobi must not be included in why? rerun election. Let's no, ask why there's now. not going to be a rerun election. Tinubu, you are afraid. You <laughs> said you are the owner of the Nigeria. You have Nigeria key. Why are you afraid? Let's why ask the man afraid? why. You are not there because of the money. <laughs> why are you there? You are so unguarded. Draw the mandate. I can't stop what laughing. People's party. And yes, Tinubu has now come out to stylishly beg the tribunal to give him a rerun. A rerun. Yes. The same <laughs> without man be, who was saying without there will be <laughs> chaos, there will be anarchy. Without the person who won the election. He's now how, begging how could that the tribunal be? that if they cannot keep him in office, uh, if he cannot remain president, they should give him a rerun. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the chicken is gradually coming home to roost. But before I break <laughs> that down for you, let me quickly show you this very shocking the, news. The On the 20th is coming of to, October to 2020, it's coming up. Nigerian youths were protesting peacefully at the Lekki Toll Gate. They called it the n protest. Mm. Then Nigerian army turned and up there, massacred. shot and killed them. Turn, turn out the to be massacred. State, Tinubu's puppet, uh. Babajide Sawolu, came out and he said this. Hmm. Fellow negotiants, this one also I, pray this one I remind for the swift recovery of the injured. This one I remind that. We are comforted you know? that we have not recorded any fatality. Uh, now the video of... Uh, this as against the widespread reminder. circulation on flashback. social media. Both myself and the leadership this is flashback. of my Ministry of Health mm. have been going around. Indeed, we went round all the hospitals last night. Mm. We went round the mortuaries see liar. last night see liar. to see and to monitor for ourselves mm. what has happened and to look and identify the injured protestants. Injured. Now that was Sonwolu confirming that nobody died at Lekito Gate. Mm. That he went round with his Minister of Health to all the hospitals and mortuaries and nobody died. But look at this letter. This letter leaked online just few hours ago and it is dated 19th of July 2023. Mm. It reads letter of a Sorry. <laughs> Sorry guys, another one. I don't call for this one. July 2023. It reads letter of objection, mass burial for the 103, the year 2022, and SARS victims. Mm. 103 people died at Lekki Toll Gate. And someone Lugo hide all the bodies. Then he came out and lied. Say nobody died. Now they want to conduct a mass burial for those people. And the burial was contracted to TOS Funerals Limited. See this woman? Yes, this woman. Now they give them the contract. Her mm. funeral company. And the contract awarded 61,285,000 naira. Now be the contract. So they still want chop money on top of the people where they buy. Oh, mm. my God. And don't be surprised if you hear of any protest coming out of Lagos very soon because this revelation has just made Tinubu and Sanwolu more unpopular in the southwest now onto the issue of Tinubu begging for a rerun election Tinubu in his final address through his lawyers came out to say well if the judges cannot uphold his election that the judges should order a rerun mm. but you know the shocking thing <laughs> Tinubu is asking for a kind of rerun where Peter Obi will not, not be, be included. on the ballot. <laughs> See, how could that happen? How, the fear of Peter Obi is that the beginning happen? of wisdom for APC and Tinubu. He knows that if Peter Obi is on any ballot, there is no assurance for him. In fact, there is no modicum of hope for him. Peter Obi's team is saying, if there is anybody that should not be on the ballot in a rerun it is you tinubu because you are the one who is facing disqualification yeah look at how the paper reported that news 
President Bola Tinubu has appealed to justices of the presidential election petition court mm. in Abuja to exclude the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, and his party in the event of any rerun presidential election, hmm. claiming that only him and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, al haji Atiku Abubakar, are constitutionally qualified to recontest. <laughs> <laughs> Tinubu argued that if the justice is void it's a laughing stock, laughing matter three presidential election, Obi and his party will joke. not be qualified to contest, but Obi urged the five-member panel of the PREPEC not to subvert the will of the people as expressed in the February 25th presidential election, stressing that they should sack Tinubu without further delay. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, what we want is the outright disqualification of a candidate that is not qualified to contest. Mm. Almost every crime where they lead to the disqualification of candidates in the Nigerian constitution has been committed by the APC candidates. Exactly. Is it perjury, lying on that oath? Is it forgery? Sorry, Jai. Sorry, you guys. Is it having a sentence of a fine mm. hanging on your head? Everything has been committed and evidence has been brought forth to exactly. the court. Too so much what evidence. For is outright disqualification. Nobody even this rerun with Tinubu lawyers, they talk. Mm. And now they are talking of only two candidates in a rerun. I don't know if it is a deliberate attempt to just be silly. Because they quoted section 134, subsection 3, where only two candidates will go for the runoff election, the first and the second. But that is for runoff elections, not rerun election. Mm. An election that did not comply with the electoral laws, that they are asking for nullification. Yeah. It's not only two candidates that are qualified to contest, but I believe they know. They are just saying it because of the fear of His Excellency Peter Obi, which is the beginning of wisdom for APC and Tinubu. <laughs> And many obedience have come out to say they do not want a rerun election, that they want an outright declaration of His Excellency. They want Peter their mandate. As the winner. The and they want mandate the qualification of Tinubu. Yes, I know that those are the right things to do. If the judiciary system was working the way we wanted it to be. Mm. In fact, if we had a man like Peter Obi at the helm of affairs, that is the level that you will get this country to. So those who said this are absolutely right. But one thing I can tell you for free is that if there's going to be a rerun election, INEC chairman Yakub Mahmoud cannot be, be the umpire for a rerun election. Never, when never. He was the one that messed we, we're not, go, we're not going to allow that. Secondly, Tinubu will not be on seat. Mahmoud Yakub must be going to jail. Will be the one in charge. Then, thirdly, the major issue that made this February 25th election to fail the test of compliance is the failure to transmit results from polling units yeah, to the IRF. IRF. If there is going to be a rerun, I said, if, I'm not saying... Everything will be transparent. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, uh, let me just stop this uh, video here. As you can see now, the thing is going, you know, on fire. It's ba back to back fire, you know. So you don't fire, you don't backfire for APC. All these they are they are their plan, their evil plan. You don't backfire, you know. Everything we know they we know they go for it. Uh, everything is not it's not good for us. It's never good for us. So um, let me play you another second video. Uh, people are just, they are just, uh, you know, they are angry everywhere. Everywhere, every corner of Nigeria. Now, angry face, red face. They say this, uh, this regime of Bola Ahmed Tunubu, you don't tire them. So they don't want to bear it any longer. So let me just play you this one. See. They are 
Mm. Why is it impossible for us to praise God when they are wrong? Why must we always rationalize government mm -hmm. inadequacies? Is it the business of civil society to run government? I don't know. Do they have the capacity? The religious organization are we seeing? Are they not part of the problem? Are they not part of the civil society? Yeah. So let's get this issue right. Let's put the issue squarely what it is. Failure of governance. Same point, Shikena. We talk about public engagement. Has there always been any? What we want is democratic authoritarianism. Mm. Three days. Go to uh, the so called public areas. It's a huge joke. These people are no representative. They are. They are looters. They are looters. They say we should go and become uh, entrepreneurs. They are saying we are only good to be buyers, <laughs> to be a commercial economy. We are in a global economy, knowledge driven economy. And like you said, development and education are linked. And again, this set of people are they who interested in education. in education? Do they are not. Of education? And are they ready to, to, to face the challenge they will, they will face when? People are educated. And unfortunately, we don't have a dance the way we used to have it. Yeah. We don't have the, the, the labor movement is a shame. The smart and meticulous final address of the Labour Party is here. And Another one is this one. Let's start with the response to the election. The Labour Party said in their final address that after conducting data analysis for the 18,000 polling unit blood results yeah. on the IREF, that they represent 2.5 million 65,269 accredited voters, proving further in these polling units, hmm. 9 million 165,191 voters collected their PVCs. Yeah, in these yeah, the units. dubious. So the number the dubious. of accredited voters is higher than the margin between Tinubu and Pitobi. While it's acceptable that all the accredited voters in the more than 18,000 polling units that their results are blurred didn't vote for one candidate, but without determining their numbers, it renders the announced results invalid. Mind you, these are not the only votes unaccounted for by INEC. According to the data analysis by Labour Party's witness, which was unchallenged by the respondents, 39,546 polling units are inaccessible on the IREF. Yeah. And in these polling units, a total number of 23,119,298 registered voters collected their PVCs, and 5,532,553 voters were accredited on election day to vote in these polling units. So when you add this figure to the other 2.5 million, the unaccounted votes are more than 8 million votes which is too high when you look at the margin between Tinubu and P2B based on the INEC allocated figures. So what the LP legal team are trying to say here is that there was massive suppression of votes by INEC mm. and they shouldn't have called the election without accounting for all the votes, especially when the unaccounted votes are higher than the margin between candidates. Recently, INEC had to declare some governorship elections inconclusive because unresolved and unaccounted votes were higher than the margin of lead. Why didn't they do that during the presidential election? Hmm. And INEC hoping that there's insufficient evidence to prove this, having not provided the hard copies that represent the blood and inaccessible results, the Labour Party is asking the question, if their witness claimed that they collated the results with hard copies and the blood copies didn't affect the outcome, why didn't they tender the hard copies in court to prove it? If the hard copies are truly in their possession, also, why didn't they certify the hard copies and deliver them to the Labour Party? Instead, they certified blood IREF copies that are unreadable. Some are not even results, but images from other things. So in the absence of hard copies from INEC, Labour Party are telling the court to invoke presumption of Section 167, Subsection D of the Evidence Act in their favour. They also cited a Supreme Court judgment between Dan Ladi and Dan Giri, 2015, where the Supreme Court held that if an admitted document is incomplete, the party to be damnified is the one who ought to have produced the proper or correct and complete document if he failed to produce the said document in its correct form. So based on this, they are asking the court to refer to the 18,088 blood copies as the results for the election. They also said that the alleged technological glitch on the day of election isn't a valid justification for the outright violation of the Electoral Act, mm. INEC regulation and guidelines, and the manual for election officials. 
like you already know, we've covered these extensively. All these laws make the upload of forms EC8As to IREV mandatory from the polling units immediately after vote counting. INEC in their final address claimed that the Federal High Court, while delivering judgment on the case between them and the Labour Party, held that they can conduct election and do collation anyhow they wish. This judgment, the Labour Party legal team said, is inferior to that of the Supreme Court on Oyetola versus INEC. Also, INEC in their final address argued that their guidelines and regulations are not binding, that they are ordinary documents. Let's see how the Labour Party countered. They quoted a judicial precedent by the Supreme Court, Faleke versus INEC. In that judgment, Honorable Justice Ogunbeyi said, the manual for election official 2015, which makes a substantial part of the one INEC is using now, the 2023 version, he said that they are not mere instructions or directions, rather they are subsidiary legislations which have the force of law. They have their origin from the Constitution and the Electoral Act. This is true. That's why you see citations of the Electoral Act in the manual. Let's see what the INEC guideline says in paragraph 2. Election transmission and upload of election results and publishing to the INEC result viewing portal. One of the problems noticed in the electoral process is the irregularities that take place between the polling units after the announcement of results and the point of result collision. Sometimes results are hijacked, exchanged, or even destroyed at the polling unit or on the way to the collision centers. It becomes necessary to apply technology to transmit the data from the polling unit so that the results are collated up to the point of result declaration. The real-time publishing of polling unit level results on IRA portal and transmission of results using the BIVAS demonstrates INET's commitment to transparency in results management. This commitment is barred by sections 42, subsection 2, 60, subsection 1, 2, and 5, 64, subsection 4A and 4B, and 64, subsection 5 of the Electoral Act 2022, which confers INEC with the power to transmit election results electronically. The system minimizes human errors and delays in results collation and improves the accuracy, transparency, and credibility of the results collation process. So how can INEC overlook all these and say that uploading of results is not mandatory hmm. and that the non-upload didn't affect the results? They are the joking. The legal team cited section 60 of the Electoral Act 2022. They are, just, they are the joker. It's not mandatory to upload results. It also provides punishment for presiding officers who fail to follow the law. Hmm. They can be imprisoned or fined if they are convicted. Also, Labour Party said that according to their cyber security expert witness that INEC did not properly test their IT infrastructure deployed for the conduct of the election. The expert found many vulnerabilities and INEC failed to comply with the standard and guidelines for government websites. And since this evidence was not countered, none of the respondents tendered any other test report to the contrary. Labour Party are asking the court to invoke presumption based on section 167 subsection D of the Evidence Act. And going by all these evidence submitted by the petitioners that they have established the non-compliance by INEC and non-compliance was not only substantial but grievously affected the outcome of the presidential election. They also highlighted the data analysis by the mathematician that proves that Labour Party won reverse and Benue states. The results he computed were gotten from forms ET8As uploaded on IREV and the certified true copies of forms ET8As given to Labour Party by INEC. So going by this unchallenged report alone, Labour Party will add two states to the number of states they won, while the APC will lose two states. Based on all these, Labour Party are asking the court to nullify the presidential election in the interest of justice and declare the purported return of Tinubu invalid. Mm -hmm. Going by the arguments, you can see the strategy deployed by the Labour Party legal team. These lawyers know their onions. And this shows that they did not tender the total computed figures that they scored in the election. This is intentional. Although when the star witness was questioned about it, he said that the prof mentioned it in his statement. They all intentionally avoided this because of one reason. You cannot on one hand be telling the court to nullify the election because it was conducted in gross violation of the Electoral Act and on the other hand be telling the court to declare you winner. Mm. You can't seriously tell the court that you won an election that was seriously flawed. Exactly. Yes, but they still pleaded it in their petition. 
But that will happen if the court determines that the gross violation didn't affect the results, which will ultimately lead to the recollection of the results. Yes, Labour Party avoided not getting trapped in claiming that they won a flawed election, but they still gave the court the evidence that proves they won. So it's left for the court to decide, but let's not go deep into the analysis. It's better done in another video. Before we see their response on the 25% requirement in Abuja, let's see how they countered INEC on their thinking that they are not bound by statements they made before the election. If you remember, INEC claims and continues to claim that since there's a court judgment that permits them to conduct an election how they want, that they can say election will be conducted in a particular manner before election and during the election they conduct it in a different manner from what they said that there shouldn't be a consequence. <laughs> the Labour Party disagrees completely by asking the judges a question. Whether INEC, having publicly represented and assured that he was irrevocably committed to complying with the law by electronic transmission and upload of election results from polling units to the IREF portal, is INEC not stopped from reneging from this publicly given assurance? In order to prove that the law of estoppel is firmly entrenched, they cited a Supreme Court judgment in the matter between Access Bank and NSITF 2022. The Supreme Court held, quote, Instructively, it is right that plethora of cases reiterated the fundamental principles regarding estoppel. It was aptly posited by this court in Jacobs Oyeruba versus Ebowole, 1998. Estoppel is now more than a rule of parties and it can be rightly described as a substantive rule of law. A person ought not to be allowed to blow hot and cold, to affirm at one time and deny at another time. That is to say, to approbate and reprobate, mm. unquote. So in driving home their argument, Labour Party is saying that INEP cannot, after telling the whole world in Nigeria, in Chatham House, in London, that they will transmit and upload polling unit results from polling units on election day, only to turn around and do the exact opposite and think they are within their rights to do so. People like Festus Okoye, who re-emphasized before the election that INEC will not abandon the upload of election results. Look at what he said in his latest interview. The worst part was that INEC representative who came to court under subpoena to present the statement that Festus Okoye released before the election denied and told the court that the press release doesn't exist and that it's not in their records. Imagine an institution funded by taxpayers denying their own press statements. Anyway, Labour Party downloaded the press release from INEX website, they provided the URL, and tendered it in court during the hearing and it was admitted in evidence. Also, Labour Party cited the recent Supreme Court judgment on Oyotola versus Adeleke that reinforced the mandatory upload of results from polling units. There's a lot more they said, but let's leave that for another video. On the threats made by Tinubu's council in their final address, that the petitioners are inviting anarchy by their ventilation of this issue of non-transmission of results electronically by INEC, the Labour Party described it as a cheap, misguided and destructive blackmail, clearly yeah. intended to target the country's judicialism and constitutionalism. It also aims at cannibalizing our democracy. When has it become offensive for petitioners to converse a ground prescribed for the challenge of an election? The expression taken too far can be extremely dangerous. Now, let's see how they tackle the 25% requirement in Abuja. Remember that Tinubu's council, after arguing against it, ended up agreeing that the end is conjunctive. Mm. And reading their submissions further, it seems that they agree that 25% is mandatory. But it's 25% of two-thirds of the votes cast in Abuja. <laughs> they said that total valid votes recorded in FCT is 460,071 votes. Mm. And two-thirds of this number is 306,714 votes. That 25% of this number is 76,678.5. Mm -hmm. And going by what INEC announced, Tinubu scored 90,902 votes. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to say that Tinubu met 25% requirement going by Awelowo versus Shagari election dispute. <laughs> are they confused? <laughs> so after arguing that it wasn't required that Abuja should be treated as a state. Exactly. Now, in this new reply, they are saying that it's 25% of two thoughts. Yeah. Wow. Is that the way it is calculated in the states? It is based on total votes, not two-thirds of the total. Mm. Let's even assume they are right, but why will Abuja be calculated differently? 
Imagine what will be going on in the mind of the judges when they are reading this. Anyway, let's see what the Labour Party legal team said that forced them to quickly accept that 25% is mandatory. On their reliance on Section 299 of the Constitution, which says that Abuja should be taken as a state, the LP legal team cited a Supreme Court judgment delivered in 2022 in the matter between FRN versus Ngajiwa. The Supreme Court held that the interpretation of the provisions of the Constitution where the words of the Constitution are clear and unambiguous, a literal interpretation will be applied. Where there is ambiguity in a literal interpretation, a holistic interpretation will be resorted to. All sections must be read together and purposefully so that no section is rendered redundant and superfluous. If the words remain ambiguous, the intention of the makers of the constitution must be discovered to determine the mischief sought to be cured. The court is entitled to consider how the law stood before the statute was passed, what the mischief was for which the old law did not provide, and the remedy which has been provided by the new law. They also cited other judicial precedents to support the correct interpretation of the constitution. They cited other court judgments that delivered judgment based solely on the interpretation of section 299 which affirmed that abuja should be treated as a state hmm. but they insisted that in the case of abuja 25 percent the court must interpret section 299 together with section 134 subsection 2. they also said that the presidential election dispute between awolowo and shagaru that the defendant cited doesn't apply in this case because going by the 1999 constitution there's an additional requirement for fct that reading the entire section 299, what they mean by Abuja should be considered a state is for the purpose of enjoying the executive, legislative, and judicial powers vested in a state. That's why the president is the governor of the FCT, the okay. National Assembly legislates the local laws of the FCT, and the FCT High Court has territorial jurisdiction in the FCT. To support this argument, they cited the judicial president, Iwuchuku versus Attorney General Anambra State 2015. So going by this, if Section 299 is read separately, the LLP legal team argues that it will render redundant the wordings of the drafters of the Constitution in Section 134, subsection 2b. Yes, especially where it says, and the federal capital territory. If Abuja is a state, why didn't they just say 37 states of the Federation? Mm. Also, it makes no sense that in Section 3, subsection 1, where the 36 states are enumerated, Abuja is missing there. Mm -hmm. So they are telling the court that the literal interpretation of section 134 subsection 2b is that a candidate must secure 25% of votes cast in the two-thirds of the entire 36 states of Nigeria <laughs> and 25% votes cast in FCT. That the word and has been defined by the Supreme Court to be conjunctive, which makes it mandatory. Yeah. Also, and has been given judicial interpretations in many cases, for example, Abubakar versus Yaradua, 2008. On the use of the word each in the states of the Federation, they contend that the specific mention of a class is to provide for the person specifically mentioned, to the exclusion of others not mentioned. To support this argument, they cited a judicial precedent in the matter between Grand Systems Petroleum Limited versus Access Bank PLC, 2015. They also told the court that the fact that Section 299 states that FCT is to be treated as a state is a general provision which has no bearing on Section 134. That the 1979 Constitution was silent on 25% requirement in FCT. But in 1999 Constitution, the drafters deliberately amended the section to include 25% in FCT, partly because they intended that the popularity of the winning candidate must extend to the FCT being the capital city and melting pot for all Nigerians, that it will truly reflect the will of all Nigerians. The respondents are wrong in the approach they have taken to the interpretation of the intention of the makers of the constitution as it relates to section 134 subsection 3b. And this section must be interpreted with section 14 of the constitution, which says that sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria, from whom government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. Also section 2, where it says Nigeria shall be a federation consisting of states and the federal capital territory. Governorship elections were held on March 18th. None was held in Abuja. In conclusion, they urge the court to discountenance the respondent's defense as devoid of any scintilla of merit and hold that the petitioner's case is meritorious and grant them their reliefs.
Now, let's see their address on Tinubu's forfeiture. On the claim by Tinubu's legal counsel that mm. Tinubu's forfeiture judgment was not registered in Nigeria and therefore cannot apply in Nigeria, the LP legal team countered by saying that the judgment being documentary evidence is certified, sealed, notarized, and authenticated by the United States court which issued it. They reinforced their argument by citing one judicial precedent delivered by the Supreme Court in 2004 in the matter between MV Delos versus Ocean Steamship Nigeria Limited. The court held, quote, a party who intends to rely on the judgment of a foreign court must comply with either of two options, namely, A, by sealing the judgment with the seal of the foreign court, or B, by a copy certified by the legal keeper with a certificate or of a notary public or of a consul or diplomatic agent stating that the copy is duly certified by the officer. They asked the court to uphold that the judgment against Tinubu which they tendered in evidence met all the relevant conditions. They also debunked the claim by Tinubu's legal team that the judgment must be registered in Nigeria. If you remember, they quoted Section 3 of the Reciprocal Enforcement of Foreign Judgment Ordinance. The Labour Party insists that they are not seeking to enforce any money judgment against Tinubu. They are not trying to recover any money payable under foreign judgment. Hmm. So the act the respondent quoted does not apply in this case. On the citation of Article 54, Subsection 1C of the United States Convention Against Corruption by the respondents, the same article talks about member states providing mutual legal assistance concerning property acquired or involved in the commission of an offense established in accordance with the convention. LP's legal team argues that Tinubu's judgment they tendered in evidence has nothing to do with mutual assistance. Therefore, the UN article the respondent cited is irrelevant to P2B's petition. They went further to argue that the main issue is whether a civil forfeiture under U.S. law as ordered by the U.S. court in Chicago can be equated to a fine as used in Section 137, Subsection 1D of the 1999 Constitution. Of course, the answer is yes. In support of this claim, they cited a judicial precedent in the U.S., Austin v. United States, in 1993. In that unanimous judgment by the U.S. Supreme Court, the Honorable Justice is held that forfeiture is a fine and is punishment regardless that it did follow from criminal conviction. The court also held that the U.S. Congress used the word forfeit for fine. Mm. They went on to cite many dictionary definitions of forfeit, mm. which of course means fine. Yeah. The LP legal team didn't stop here. They cited another U.S. Supreme Court judgment, Teams v. Indiana 2019. In that case, the state of Indiana filed a civil forfeiture proceeding against Thames. They claimed that his Land Rover SUV was used in transporting narcotics, which of course he challenged and appealed to the Supreme Court. The court held in a unanimous judgment that fines may be employed by the state in a measure out of accord with the penal goals of retribution and deterrence. That fines are a source of revenue, while other forms of punishment cost the state money. So the most important takeaway from all this is that all the judicial precedents cited by the LP legal team consistently define forfeiture as a fine or a punitive economic sanction against the persons whose property is affected. Timp, in one of the cases mentioned, challenged the forfeiture of his SUV, while Tinubu did not challenge the forfeiture of $460,000 narcotics proceeds. Mm. The question arises, why did he challenge it? It was because he suffered economic sanctions, just like Tinubu. They also cited the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015, which interprets fine as, quote, includes any pecuniary forfeiture or pecuniary compensation payable under this act. Penalty includes any pecuniary fine, cost, forfeiture, or compensation recoverable under an order, unquote. Tinubu's counsel in their final address and even in court concentrated on the fact that he was never convicted, that he just forfeited money. But the LP legal team are saying that the section of the constitution that their okay. petition relies on is section 137 subsection 1D, which disqualifies a candidate if he has been fined by a court. And in all the cases they cited, whether it's civil or criminal, it is still a fine. Yeah. And if one is fined, it is related to dishonesty or fraud, which is covered in the same section. The LP legal team also cited judicial precedents in Nigeria where the Supreme Court defined forfeiture as a fine. In the first judgment, Attorney General Bende State versus Abufodo, 1999, the Supreme Court held that forfeiture is an action of forfeiting something or being forfeited. It is a penalty, a forfeit. It is synonymous with a fine, yeah. penalty, the damage, crime. confiscation. Justice Eagle of Blessed Memory was among the panel of justices that delivered the judgment. 
In the second judgment, of course, we made a video about this one, the celebrated case between Mohamed Abacha and the Federal Republic of Nigeria 2014. The current Chief Justice of Nigeria was among the panel of justices that delivered the judgment. They held that these definitions leave no doubt that forfeiture is a sanction, a fine by the court. It is penal and criminal in nature. Yeah. So after all the citations both in the US and Nigeria, the two Supreme Courts defined forfeiture as a fine. Even that of Abacha, the Supreme Court held that it is penal and criminal in nature. Based on this, the LP legal team are saying that the express meaning and intentment of Section 137, Subsection 1D of the 1999 Constitution, a person, even though not convicted, have forfeited property on account of criminal conduct, should not aspire to or be allowed to occupy the exalted office of President of Nigeria. In order to reinforce this claim, they said that the reason or is used twice is to separate persons convicted from persons who, even though not sentenced, are affected by an order of a fine imposed by a court. So this particular section is targeted at people that were fined by the court, as in this case, Tinubu, and even if they are not convicted, they still fall foul of the section. In this same section, any court was used, so the United States District Court, Northern District of Illinois, that made the order of fine against Tinubu falls in the category of any court. Yes, some may argue that the drafters meant Nigerian court, but the Labour Party legal team argues that it is actually any court that by using all to separate them makes it very obvious. Tinubu, having opened a bank account with the same address that the U.S. Customs Service disclosed that it was a drop-off point for packages from Nigeria that contains narcotics. Hmm. So despite not being convicted, his actions borders on money laundering and narcotics trafficking, which all falls under dishonesty and fraud. On the witness that they called, they said that the fact he accepted that it was not a money judgment means that registering the judgment is not required in Nigeria, in contrast to what they claimed. And it's fictional for the witness to claim to have a license to practice federal law across the United States. Also, his claim that the court relied on American law section 981, that it deals with civil forfeiture, is embarrassing and betrayed his claim of being knowledgeable in American law. Mm. So based on all this, they are asking the court to hold that Tinubu was not qualified to contest the presidential election and he should be disqualified. Their arguments on the double nomination of Shetima will be covered in another video because this one is already too long. Mm. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so that is it. That is how we're going to have it. So, the uh, Tunumbu, uh, your fate lie on the our judiciary, our tribunal uh, court of law. So, you cannot say uh, one person should be disqualified. If anybody should be disqualified, it is you because you don't have your paper completed. And your, 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 the baggage is too much on your neck to carry. So anyway, uh, my viewers, just drop your comment below. Let me know what you think of this video. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Yeah. So we will bring you more uh, updates in the nearest future. You know? So thank you. I love you all. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Timo Starboy Reality Talk TV. Just share our program. Share. We don't monetize it. We don't get anything from the YouTube or uh, Facebook as well as uh, uh, Twitter. So we don't monetize it. We are just doing it for voluntarily because we want a better life. For ourselves, we want freedom. We are freedom fighter, so we want freedom for ourselves. That is why we are pertaining, you know, we are contributing our own effort. So please understand, okay? Just share our program. Let it reach where it's supposed to reach, okay? So God will bless you abundantly. Thank you. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Love you all.